Today we're going to talk about files. And the main thing about files is that all the large pieces of information that you will be storing is stored in what is known as a file. Now these files can be stored on our local hard drive, a USB thumb drive, something like that, or even on the network. And so these files are just large pieces of information. Now if you remember back to the computer's lectures, we know that in a computer, RAM is where all of our variables go. So random access memory, which is stored inside the computer, is where we store all of our variables, lists, dictionaries, things like that. The only problem with this is as soon as we reboot the computer or turn it off, all that information is gone. So we need some more permanent storage. Secondly, the amount of storage that we have in RAM is limited. Now, in the computer that I'm filming this on, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's 16 billion bytes of RAM. Now, if you look at any large data set for high performance computing or data sets for biology, engineering, math, whatever it happens to be, you'll notice these exceed like hundreds, thousands of gigabytes, terabytes, things like that. And so we can't store, that's our working set. We can only work on what's in RAM. So we have to take some pieces from a file, store it in RAM, then we can work on it and then store it back. And so in a file, it's not like using a variable at all. Instead, what we have to do is we have to open the file and then what we have to do is read from the file or store to the file. One is called reading, one is called writing. And essentially what you do is you go through what's called the file object class to read and write from a file. Now from a file, we can read a certain number of bytes. We could seek to a different byte location and say, I wanna read 10 bytes from here. And so the nice thing about that is, is we're just going to do character. We're not gonna do binary in this class. We're going to do strings essentially, so characters. Each character is one byte. That makes it very easy because Whenever I say, grab me five bytes, that's five characters. So if my name is Steven, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, that's seven characters. And so I could seek to where my name starts, grab seven characters, and now what I've essentially done is taken Steven from a file and put it into RAM. And now I can work with it just like a normal string inside of Python. And that's the nice thing about files in Python. So let me erase what we've done here. So in this, we have to know a few things about what a file is. So if we look at this path right here, where it says C colon user smars1 downloads test.py, that is known as an absolute path. So C colon, this is Windows, so you won't see C colon and things like that in a Mac or Linux. Instead, you'll see whatever the drive number is or the drive name is. So in this case, C colon is the main hard drive that the operating system is loaded on. And then what we have is called an absolute path. Now this is an absolute path because we start from the absolute root. And the root here is C colon. And so it says go to C colon, find a directory called users. Now directories and folders are used interchangeably. They mean slightly different things, but for purposes of what we're doing here, we can think of those two things as interchangeable. And so we go from C colon to users. And in there we have another, it's essentially a tree. And then we go from SMARS1 to downloads. And, and when we go through all these different paths, we'll find test.py, my Python file. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually self-open myself. Does that make sense? So we're going to open test.py and print out a certain number of characters, that sort of stuff. Now I'm going to do it with an absolute pass, path and I'm going to do it with a relative path. Now, a relative path doesn't start from the very beginning. So instead, in absolute path, we have to know the directory structure. And that's almost impossible because we want to be able to share our program for multiple people. And not everybody's going to have C colon user SMARS1. In fact, that's very rare that that's going to happen. And so we use what's called a relative path. Wherever we execute this Python file, which in this case is under the downloads folder, that's where everything is relative. And so I could use dot dot, which means go to the parent, in this case, SMARS1, and find me a file. And I'll show you exactly what that means in this case. So, first things first, this is a built-in function in Python. Okay, so remember, this is files. We have to open the file, then we can do something with the file, then we close the file. Okay, so we use what's called a stream reader or stream writer. In this case, I'm going to use f for file, and we use the built-in function called open. So whenever I type open, it's going to take two parameters. The very first parameter is the path. Hey, what do you want me to open? Now I'm gonna specify this as an absolute path first, and I'll show you how to specify this as a relative path. So if we look up here, we can say C colon forward slash. Now, if you're used to Windows, you know it's a backslash. However, the problem with backslash is if you remember, backslash is how we escape in Python. And so a backslash n does not print backslash n and n, it prints a new line character. And so, in Windows, Python allows you to use the forward slash. You can use a backslash, but you have to do backslash, backslash. It gets kind of hairy. So C colon forward slash users, forward slash smars1s, forward slash downloads, test.py. Now, 
Don't get confused here because in Windows, your folder and directory and your file names are case insensitive, unlike on Unix systems or like a Mac or something like that. So even though I'm specifying users just exactly like it's typed, that is good programming practice. Even though on a Windows machine, it's case insensitive. So if I specify them all as lowercase, it would still open the exact same file. But we want to have good programming practices so that our Python script works for every single operating system out there. So that's the first parameter. The first parameter is, okay, hey, what do you want me to open? The second parameter is, how do you want me to open? This is called the mode. So in this case, we're going to use the mode R. It stands for open me up as reading, okay? Now by default, this will open it up in text mode. That way there, whenever I grab a byte, it grabs one character. And then whenever I read something or write something, I read and write Python strings. And it makes it so much easier because we can manipulate, we can do the replace function, we can do the trim function on Python strings. And it makes our lives so much easier, okay? So now that I have done this, I always go ahead and do f.close because we have to do that before we exit. Now, there is something in there. It's a good practice to, after you open to always close it when you're done with the file. Now, if your Python script ends, it will automatically close your file. However, if your Python script crashes, you're not guaranteed that it's going to close the file. It may, it may not happen. So it's always a good idea after you open to specify the close. That way there, if something happens, okay, we know that we have a close in there when we're done with the file. So notice that whenever I use open, it's f equals. It's going to provide me a new class object called f. And in this case, you can call it whatever you want, my file. I'm just gonna call it f for file. Okay, so I've opened the file. Now, what will happen in Python is if the file can't be found or for some reason the file can't be opened, it will throw what's called a file not found error if it couldn't be found or a permission error if we don't have permission to read from the file. And so that is an exception that we have to catch with a try except block. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. So <clears throat> just for now, I'm going to read the first 10 characters of test.py. So remember, it's gonna go into a string. So I'm gonna say st for my string, f.read and then 10. Now, <clears throat> the read, we can specify it with no parameters or one parameter. In this case, if I specify it with no parameters, Python will read the entire file into a string called st. Now, if I put 10, Python will read from our current location up to, but not including the 10th. So it gives us 10 bytes, but remember, just like a list, we start at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that gives us 10 total bytes. And all I'm gonna do here is print whatever we got, okay? There we go. So now what we've done is we've opened the file for reading. We've read the first 10 bytes and we're going to print out what those 10 bytes are. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what those are going to be. So we run our code here. It says file contents equals F equals open. Okay. So if you notice, I'm actually opening the script that I'm actually writing right now. So let's count the first 10 bytes. One for F, two for the space, three for the equals, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so we should get everything above here. I'm gonna highlight it. F equals open left parenthesis and then a quotation mark. And if you look down here, you'll notice we'll get an F equals open parenthesis quotation mark. And there you go. So that's exactly what's happening. So we open the file, we read the first 10 bytes. Now, because we're opening this in text mode, which is the default mode, for reading, what it's going to do is it's going to check all the permissions. Once again, if we're not allowed to read from this, we're going to get an error. So let me make a mistake in here and let's say tst.py. Now this file does not exist. So let's see what Python does whenever it's like, hey, I can't find the file you want me to open. So we run it and we get a file not found error right here. And so once again, this is an exception that we can catch. So the best way to do this is we need a try block. And then we'll catch the file not found error. And we'll just say print enable to find file, okay? This way here, we know everything's going on. Now, now, you'll notice that we've always done the if name equals main, go to main. The reason is, is because how do I exit right now? If I did a return here, we're on the top level, we're not allowed to return. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do if name equals main, and then we're just gonna call the main function. Perfect. Okay, so now in this case, whenever we accept, we can return from the main function, which essentially will return back to line 14 and then quit the program. So let's take a look at what happens when we run this. We get unable to find file, and that's because we're actually accepting file not found error, accepting, ex, accepting. 
Now let's change it back to TEST and see what happens whenever the file can be found. Now that the file can be found, the file contents is def main. That's the first 10 characters you can find. So notice that's how we read from a file. Now be very careful because as soon as we change this R to a W, we open it for writing. Whenever we write to a file, it's going to either create the file if it doesn't exist or overwrite the file if it does exist. Now once again, it is possible that we don't have permission to write to the file, in which we'll get an exception once again. The only point, point is, is if we open a file for writing, it will clear it. And so if I did a W right now into this file, everything I've just typed will be deleted. And that is the biggest problem with the write. Now we can open it for what's called appending. Appending will open it for writing and then seek all the way to the end, line 16 here. And so if we start writing stuff, it will start writing it to the end. So I'm gonna create uh, test.txt just so that I'm not overwriting my file, my Python script. In this case, test.txt does not exist, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna catch the permission error because if the file is not found, then what we want to happen is we want you to create the file. And so we shouldn't get a file not found error, we should get a permission error. Okay, now notice by just changing this mode to a W, we're gonna open it for writing, which means we can no longer use the read function. You open it for reading or writing. There is a way to open it for both bidirectional, but it makes it so that it's very difficult to find out where are you. Okay, so it's very rare that you wanna open it for reading and writing. It's more common to open it for just reading or just writing. So whenever we look at this, we can say f.write, and then once again, because we open it up as a text document, we can just write any old string in there. So this is a test, okay? So now we wrote this is a test. I'm gonna go ahead and run it and see what happens. Okay, so we didn't have anything printed out because notice we're writing to a file and the only time we're gonna get something printed out is if we had an error. Test.txt did not exist, now it does. So let's go ahead and open that file and notice it says this is a test. Now once again, notice there's only one line. That's because there is no new line character. Unlike print, whenever we do write, it writes exactly what you give it. So if you want a new line character at the end, you have to specify backslash n. So let's go ahead and change this to my COSC 505, okay? And we'll put a new line character in there. I still have it open over here where it says this is a test. So let's see what happens whenever we try to open this for reading again. Okay, so the file runs and let's go ahead and click on test.txt. So notice now because we specified the backslash n, I now have two lines in here and it overwrote it and said my COSC 505. So now let's see what happens whenever we open this for the append mode, which is just an A, okay? Now I'm going to specify your Python file and let's see what happens now. Once again, we had two lines. We had my COSC 505, we specified the new line character, that put us on line two. So now we're opening it up in the append mode. Notice whenever we open it up with the W as the write mode, it overwrote everything that we just did. So if we do this again, it runs, we click on our file, and it says my COSC 505, your Python file, and now we have three lines. So in the append mode, once again, what will happen is it will open it for writing, and then it will seek all the way to the end so that it doesn't overwrite your file. You just start adding stuff to the end of a file. And that is the easiest way to do a pen mode. There is no pre-pen mode. You just have to learn how to seek. And let's do that now. So I'm gonna open test.txt for reading and I'm gonna try to write to it just to show you what happens when I open a document for reading and try to write to it. So notice we have unsupported operation, not writable. So once again, notice that the mode has an R in it. That means read only. We can use R plus, which means it's bi-directional. We can read and write to it. And so what happens is when we open it up for reading, write is still there. It's just that we can no longer use it. So now what I'm going to do is do an F read. I'm gonna do ST. So if you recall, if I do not pre uh, present any parameters to F.read, what this is going to do is read the entire file into a string called ST. So I'm just gonna read from the file, print st, and see what happens. And it says, my COC 505, your Python file. Let's go ahead and look at the file, and that's exactly what it is. Notice that the new line character is printed down here. That's why we have all three of these lines printed. 
Okay, and so that's what happens. Now, let's take a look at what happens whenever I do two. So once again, if I specify the parameter, that's the number of characters we want. Notice that whenever I open a file, we start from the very beginning of the file, unless we're in append mode. So if I run this, we should get my, because we're gonna read character M followed by character Y. That's two characters that we're telling Python to read. So once again, if we do not specify a parameter in read, it says read the entire thing. But if we do specify a parameter, it has to be numeric, and it says this is the number of characters I want you to read. So let's take a look at how we can actually move. So this is called a file stream, because if I did st equals f.read2 again, let's take a look at what happens. So this looks like, because I'm just duplicated the code, it looks like we should get my my. But let's take a look at what actually happens inside the file. We get my, then space c. So if you remember, the file was my space cose. So instead, we wrote, we read my, and then it read the next two characters. This is why it's called a file stream. Whenever we read something, we move on. So my, since we read two characters, my, we've moved on from there and we've positioned ourselves after the y. So anytime you read something or write something, it moves with you. That's why these things are called file streams. It's a stream. It moves with you. So with that, it'd be very helpful if we can actually move within the stream. Now in text mode, we can only seek from the very start of a file. So f.seek tells you, hey, I want you to go here. Remember, once again, it's a stream. So if we read something from the file, it moves on from after the, what we read. So in this case, we read to, and let's seek back to zero, which is the beginning of the file. And let's see what happens now. So now I get my, my. So f.seek zero, even though, remember, if I didn't have the seek there, we get my and then space C. So it would keep up and read the third byte and then the fourth byte. So in this case, we're moving all the way back up to the beginning of the file. And then what we do is we read the exact same two bytes we're going to get. And so seek allows us to move anywhere within the file. So let's say I move to byte number four. Let's see what happens now. So it says my OS. Why does it say that? Well, remember, M is at zero, Y is at one, space is at two, C is at three. And then remember, we seeked to the fourth byte, which in this case is O. And we said, hey, read two bytes. And so that gave us OS. So once again, that's why we see my OS. And that helps to understand what seek is actually doing. So let's take a look at a different paradigm that we can do here. So once again, whenever we read from the file, we have to close the file. Now, Python gives us an easy way to do this, which is called the with statement. So what we can do is instead, I'm gonna just move this code down just so you can see that these perform the same operations. It's just that one that ha helps you group your code a little bit better. So we say with open, I'm just gonna copy it so I don't have to retype it, as f, okay? So notice the syntax is slightly different. It's not f equals open anymore. We're saying open this as the object f. Okay, now while we're in this with block, the file is open. As soon as we exit this with block, Python will automatically clean up this file, close it for you, and things like that. So it makes it much easier for us, because now all I'm going to do is copy and paste these and delete everything that we've just done. Okay, so now these have to be indented just like an if statement, just like a while loop, things like that. So what's going to happen here is on line two, Python will open the file, associate it with an object called f, and that way there we can still read from it. So now I'm going to run the program and notice it says my OS. Notice what's missing here though, f.close. We don't need to close it if we use a with statement. Why? Because the with statement, as long as we're within the block of the with statement, the file is open, it's ready to go. As soon as Python sees us exit the block, which here is line eight, what it's going to do is automatically clean up the file, close it for us and make sure everything's good to go. So and essentially what we've done with the files is to test a path, let's take a look at what is called a relative path. So in this case, we have C colon users, Mars one download. So I'm specifying every single structure of the directory all the way from the very beginning. However, recall what I said in the beginning of the video is if we don't specify everything, this is called a relative path. And in this case, it's going to be relative to wherever we're running test.py. Now test.py is running in my downloads folder, which is also where we set or we wrote to test.txt. So I'm going to run this now. 
And notice it says file not found. So I wonder why. So let's take a look at where we're actually running this program from. So in this, we run it from FS1 EECS Mars One Web Home Courses. So notice whenever I specified the absolute path, it was able to run it. So this is the hardest part about relative paths is you have to know what directory we're actually running this in. And that is our biggest problem because notice that this is the directory we're in right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a CD, C colon users, Mars One downloads. Okay, so that stands for change directory. We changed the directory and now we're going to run test.py. Okay, and notice that whenever I change the directory, it actually worked. Why? Because whenever I run Python test.py, we specify test.txt as a relative path. So recall a relative path starts in the directory that we are actually going to run the file. So the reason it didn't work at first is because I'm in this directory, which is a completely different directory. And then I switch over using CD change directory into my downloads folder and I run it. So just to show you that case insensitivity, so notice that test.py is the name of the file, but if I specify a capital T, it gives me the same thing. Now, the hard part about that is if you're on Linux, a Unix-based system, or even a Mac, that, well, actually I think a Mac does do case insensitive as well. But if you're on a Unix-based system, it's case sensitive, that's not going to work. So once again, we talked about how we open a absolute path versus a relative path. We've done it using open and assigning that into an object. We've done it using the with statement as you're seeing on your screen. We've read from the file, we've seeked within a file, and then we wrote to a file. So that's essentially what we need to know about file. That's your basic files. Number one, the hardest part is going to be able to locate your files. So once again, if we specify a relative path, it is relative to wherever we're executing the script. Once again, we can take a look at that in Unix or Mac or something like that. If we look at our console, it will tell us what directory we're running into. If you're going to go through the graphical user interface and you double click it, it's going to be whatever folder that is in. And that is essentially in a nutshell what files are all about. So I'd recommend you to take a look at the lecture notes once again, just to make sure that you 100% understand what's going on. Watch this video a couple times just to make sure, yep, I know that read takes a parameter or doesn't take a parameter. The parameter is an integer and it returns us a string. So everything we've done in this class is text-based. That means whenever I read two bytes, we're gonna get two characters. Now we can open things as binary, but I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this video. You can look at the Python documentation if you want to, but it's not gonna be necessary for this course. And there you go. Those are files. Thanks for watching.